Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David Collette. I'm going to talk to you about the next technological revolution. Uh, a little bit ambitious, but I'm going to give it my, my all. <laughs> um, behind me, you see a classroom. Focus is on the center, uh, the front of the class, where the information is. I'll posit that this is the classroom of 10 years ago. In the next slide, we see a classroom where the group work is the center. It's distributed. Students are working with each other, this technology, but not always. And then the next image, hopefully, a glimpse of the future, the next 10 years. Personalized learning, students choosing their journey, choosing the technology that suits it with the teacher as a guide, but the student at the center. The shift here isn't about the technology. It's the paradigm shift. It's the movement from a centralized world to a decentralized world. A great example of this, I think one that we've all you know, seen come to fruition, is the movement from Word documents, where the information was centered on the document, everyone had to crowd around it to get that information, to a shift to Google Docs, where anybody could, anywhere could access the information. It was decentralized. And it democratized and speeded up the process, made it more collaborative. This is happening not just in education, but all around the world. Businesses have seen the you know, benefits of this, Uber for ride sharing, Airbnb, Kiva, microloans. And so the shift to decentralization is happening everywhere we look. But is it really decentralized, or is there further we can go? And do we want to? Is there a way we can actually really remove the middleman from this equation? And why would we want to do that? I live in the Philippines. And in the Philippines, 10% of the GDP comes from remittances, money sent home from overseas Filipino workers. Um, she sends money home to her kids, and it costs her 10% of her wage each time she does it, taken by Western Union. 10%, that's crazy. If you think about it from your perspective, when you send money home, it can take like 50 bucks that you pay to the bank, and it can take like a week to do that. How is that the future? How is that how we do things in the 21st century? Sending money from A to B, taking that long, and taking that much money. And that kind of question in the scenario has led to this. And I'm not going to talk about the price of Bitcoin. It's a whole other discussion. But I want to talk about the technology that underlies it, because Bitcoin is just a use case. The technology, the blockchain, is the real revolution. The blockchain is effectively a distributed ledger, where instead of there being a middleman institution, we split that task across different computers in the network, everybody looking at the transactions that are happening and verifying them. And that's a complex thing to understand, so let's try and pull it into something that we use all the time. Google Docs. Everyone uses Google Docs day to day, and you know in Google Docs how there's a revision history? The revision history is like the blockchain. It's the same mechanism. The idea is that when Alice sends something to Bob, you can check that Google Docs history, because everyone has access, and we can trust that that happened. It makes it faster, and in the case of the remittances, it makes it cheaper. Now, Currency is one thing, but there's actually over 1,200 different blockchain experiments happening right now. Bitcoin's just the most famous one. And everything from currency to distributed computing to privacy, you name it, it's being put on the blockchain as we speak, decentralizing it for us to use. It's about trust. It's about establishing a way for us to be able to trust each other using technology rather than having to have an arbiter of that trust, someone who to look over our shoulder to prove what we're doing. And by doing that, we speed up and make easier the process. Now, how's this going to actually affect education? And to be honest, I don't really know. It's like asking someone probably about 10, 15 years ago how Google Docs, or, or sorry, how the cloud would impact education. Not sure, but then along came Google Drive and Google Docs, and it's totally changed everything. And so I, I know that it will, and I know it's something to keep your eyes on. So instead of asking that question, let's ask this one. Have you ever wondered online why nothing costs less than a dollar? Seriously, like, why is nothing ever less than a dollar? The reason for that is because PayPal takes 30 cents on every transaction and 2.9% as well on top. And so it's really economically unfeasible or infeasible to actually 
make transactions less than a dollar. But think if you could. If you could charge 0 0.001 cent for any time you clicked on an image or a video or SoundCloud or a social media post. And at the end of the month, you might spend $5 to browse the internet. But the creators of that content, the people who are using their minds and reaching out and putting themselves out there, because so many people are clicking on that stuff, are making a living wage. Think about the revolution it would bring about to the poorest in that world. The ability to make a wage or make a, uh, and, and learn, make, uh, a living from actually being able to sell your content and your creativity online. The next technology revolution is coming, and it's going to be written on the blockchain. Thank you.